Welcome to the Cabral Concept. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor, and today on a Training Thursday, we're going to talk about how to train your own kids, and also we have a lot of health professionals that listen to this podcast and watch these videos. How can they better train their young athletes or their youth athletes? So let's get started today. One of the big misconceptions is, um, especially when I was growing up, that kids should not train with weights, that they should not even work out until maybe they're 16 years old. Now, as you know from listening to this podcast, that age, especially from a chronological standpoint, is completely arbitrary. We all know 50-year-olds that are very different. Some 50-year-olds, you think they would be 70, and some, they seem like they're in their 30s. Well, the same goes for 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 15-year-olds as well. There's a lot of boys and girls that I know where at 12 years old, I would maybe mistake them for a 16 year old. And I want to be able to train them differently because from a biological standpoint, they're already maturing at a faster rate. And then there's 16 year olds who might just have the biological rate or age right now with someone maybe that's 12 or 13. And that's, again, that's not good or bad, but it does dictate the type of training program, program I can give them and how hard I can push them with weight. So let's go for all kids in general. Kids in general from any age, like literally before age eight years old, should be trained as a well-rounded athlete. Now what does that mean? It means that they should be training movements, not exercises. So they shouldn't just do one sport specifically in terms of training. They should be able to do um, all sorts of different plyometrics and sprints and balance drills and all the things that make them just overall a great athlete. Because we know now, neurologically speaking, that from between the ages of six to eight, you pretty much created a lot of those um, adaptations in terms of your own neurology, how well your nervous system can speak to your muscles. And again, it can be trained well after that, but a lot of those things have been set in. So what I would say to you is just make sure your kids are doing a lot of different athletics and a lot of different sports, and then just get outside and playing. You know, being able to do climbing and, and just skipping and sprinting, and all of those great things. But also, even in the young age, there's nothing wrong with doing push-ups and pull-ups and the monkey bars and TRX and medicine ball drills, all that fun stuff. Because here's why. We're training movements again. We're not necessarily training exercises. So do you need your kids, whether you're training them as your athletes or your own children, to be doing heavy squats or heavy step-ups or any of those things? No. But they could do stadium stair runs. They could do body weight squats. They could do um, maybe like some light dumbbell overhead squats, different movements like that. Totally acceptable. They could train power lifting uh, movements, just the basic movements. They could train Olympic lifts, even just using a stick or you know a lightweight instead of a barbell. There's no need for a barbell. They could use what I'm holding in my hand right now. They could use a resistance band. Um, again, look towards using your own body weight first. Have kids under the age of, let's just say, going through full um, puberty or maturity. For most kids, that will be somewhere around 14 or 16 years old. Just make sure that before that, before that age, before they really get into high school or maybe into like seventh and eighth grade, that they're really just maxing out their body's ability to control its own body weight. And that means you don't need to do heavy lat pull downs if you haven't already been able to do pull ups or chin ups. And if you can't use those, then use an assistance band to be able to start doing chin ups on your own. And then you can do inverted rows with the TRX. And we have videos on all of these things as well. Well, do push-ups, do step-ups, do lunges, do squats, do deadlifts, do all of those things, but again, from a body weight position or just with lighter weights or with just resistance bands and items like that so that we don't have a chance of injury and also there simply isn't a need for it because the children's hormone levels aren't at the stage where them lifting heavy weights is going to cause the type of muscle hypertrophy or muscle growth that you're even looking for. So again, it's kind of like a moot point. There's no need to even do it. Now, the other part would be a lot of kids start very being, being very sports specific at a young age. So if that's the case, you do actually have to train what your sport is not providing. Let's just say golf, for example. A lot of kids started getting into golf as, at a young age. Well, if you're a right-handed golfer, you're always swinging through to that left side, and that means you're turning your body to your left over and over, 100 times every practice. What does that mean? Well, it means you should be doing some chopping movements with a band, with a medicine ball, with a little bit of weight to that right side, or swinging a golf club to that right side so that you, your body does not become imbalanced. That's very, very important. So always remember, you have to train the imbalances that a sport sets you up for, and also you need to train any of the imbalances that might be caused um, just from sport-specific based training. So. 
Let, let's just keep in mind that, let's do another one, tennis, right? So if you're playing tennis and you're just using that right hand to strike through and you're doing a lot of rotator cuff work always through, always through, you need to be doing some prehab work already as a thrower based motion for the rotator cuff and for the shoulder because there's so much work being done just on that right side. Um, and again, you'd want to train your wrist, forearm flexors, forearm extensors, all of those things are important and a good coach or a good athletic trainer, any of those people should be able to help you out with, those, with that programming as well. But even still, just train a well-rounded program of all different types of body weight movements and you'll already be way ahead of the game. You won't have to worry about being as sport specific as you need to be. So hopefully that helps. Um, it gives you at least a basis, a fundamental place to start and then you can decide, okay, should I get more in depth? Should I have my child um, do a one-on-one -on -one session with a personal trainer? Should I have them do a um, small group training session where they're getting at least some support for what weightlifting looks like? Um, or do I just kind of let them go outside and have fun and just play a lot of different sports? That great, that's great as well. My big takeaway is just like, keep your kids active. Make sure that they're not always on their phone, they're not always playing video games, that they're outside for at least one hour a day because again, schools don't even have recess a lot of the time or they don't have gym class and even when they do, kids just can stand outside and like not even really play any games. So get your kids interested in whatever sport that they're into and make sure that they are just running around being active, having fun, being a kid for at least one hour per day, hopefully even more. Thank you for tuning in to The Cabral Concept. I'll be back real soon with more kids tips, but also overall wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging.